Hey guys, welcome back to Digital Six Coverage. Appreciate you showing up. I am here with X Ray. So, Brooks Harvey, uh, good subscriber if you want to call him that, whatever you want to call him. Um, had a few questions, actually emailed myself and, and X Ray as well on, on different uh, things. And he was basically on the fence on the MPA, Masterpiece Arms Rifle, or the Tika. This is the TX3 or T3X TAC A1. Uh, made by Tika great rifle. This is the one that I own love shooting it and uh, And then this one here is on loan from a good friend of ours Bryson So we actually went out today. We went to the range We shot this at hundred yards and then we just skipped everything else and went straight to 731 yards we had a lot of wind we had to deal with and uh, during the morning portion of the day but this thing shot really really great at 731 yards I shot two rounds Right on, uh, right on target, two rounds, and uh, shot very well. This one obviously shoots well. You've seen it in hopefully other videos. If you're not subscribed, definitely hit the button. But uh, this is also a great shooting rifle. Some of the things that are different is we're going to talk a little bit about some of this stuff. So the chassis here, we got an MPA enhanced uh, bag rider here in the back. We've got the full MPA build. This is in 6.5 Creedmoor. This has the uh, 26 inch barrel with the uh, six and a half uh, black nitride. This is the uh, compensator by MPA. It's got a LRA send it, which isn't on there right now. A Warren bipod, um, the MPA BA rotating barricade stop, which is not on here right now. One thing nice about the MPA chassis is that it's all set up for it. It's got the Arca Swiss rail, already built in to the chassis itself so you don't have to go out and get the upgrade and mount it to your rifle some of the things that you'll see it's just a well-made rifle a lot of people are shooting this but it is very expensive so the question was if they were about the same price which one would you pick and it's it's kind of difficult because it depends what you're doing and what you plan on doing with the rifle as well this one I had set up this is basically my long range rifle, the only one that I own. And right now it's going to do everything that I need for long range. Um, if you have the ability, this one is probably almost, it's probably twice the amount of money as this one is, depending on the configuration you go with. But they make great rifles, so it depends on that. Um, some of the things that drawbacks is the that i didn't really like was the grip so a lot of people are shooting this style grip and long range shooting uh and it's a little bit different than this style this is more of an ar style less vertical um was it fine to shoot and easy and comfortable and all that yes so um, i think if maybe if i would have started on something like this this would probably feel weird but this is more like shooting when i'm shooting three gun kind of stuff more built as an AR style platform so I'm used to that uh, for the most part so it's got the Hawk Hills custom data card holder I'll throw some photos of that in there that's got the Leopold six and a half by 20 by 50 the mark 4 this is in Mills so it's a and we got the trigger tech diamond one pound trigger now this is a one pound trigger we actually tested it and it is a very very nice trigger for sure so let's get on to some of the weight. So depending on what you're going to do with this gun, right? Going back to the thing. This one comes in at, or this one comes in at 16 pounds. The Tika, as it is with paint, with uh, some extra little options for the HUD system. So there's a cord on here and a couple things that's uh, topped off with the JP uh, cantilever scope mount. And then also the, the Vortex HD 4.5 to 27, two scope caps, and the, uh, the bipod is made by Atlas. So with that, and then we got the Thunder Beast brake slash uh, suppressor threads on there. So that comes in at a total of 16 pounds like you see it. Now, as far as the Masterpiece arms, this comes in at 18 pounds. Now the barrel is a little bit longer. You will notice that the barrel is a little bit thicker as well. So, uh, this one is a little thinner. This one is a little thicker, so that's probably where that weight's coming in. Uh, the chassis is basically an all aluminum metal, which is nice. Same as this one. But 
Uh, one of the differences would be that this stock actually folds. This one you have to take the screw out to be able to take that off of there. A lot of availability and adjustments uh, within the stock here for height and for your travel, depending on how long your arms are and all that kind of stuff. Uh, let's see if I missed anything else. So now the things I don't like about this one is the, the throw. So this is the, let me see if I can find it. I got some notes here. The Stiller Precision TAC 30 Action. Um, and not, nothing nothing bad about it. I'm just not used to this style. But you will notice that it has a 90, de 90 degree throw. And it is a four and a quarter inches. We had measured it from center all the way to here is four and a quarter. This was the part that was weird. When I was trying to get on the rifle and I'd go to rack one in, it just seemed like I was way up here. And it's very close to the scope. And I'll actually hopefully throw in some video footage of that. This one, on the other hand was only a six, 70 degree bolt throw and it was only a two and three quarter inches in height difference from here to down there that just felt more comfortable uh ray's ai is actually a lot closer to this i don't know what his actual throw is but this 90 degree was definitely hard to get used to um some of the things people like to shoot with their thumb on the right depending on if you're kind of old school or new tradition kind of deal and uh this is all cut out and really nice. I prefer to shoot like this. The grip just seems a little awkward because it is made for, I think, the shooter that shoots like this as well. Can that be changed? I would assume so. But that was the other complaint. Not so much a complaint, just something that wasn't comfortable. It didn't feel, it didn't feel like the rifle that I'm used to. So, uh, Price points. We talked about it a little bit. This rifle by itself is probably twice as much. Or this one is probably twice as much as this one is but it has a lot more options when it comes to this kind of stuff barricade stops you can just basically click the MPA uh, barrier barricade stop in there in any any section in here there's a ton of different uh, holes where you can mount different stuff to it is uh, it's an awesome rifle either one of these I'd love to have um, but for the price for me I don't really know at this point in my time for me, uh, being a basically a beginner long range shooter, um, I don't really think I need to go that route right now. Maybe later on, maybe when I get some more cash or, but right now in this configuration, I would change this throw lever for sure. Whether you had to change out the whole action and go with something different that had a different throw of say a 70 degree bolt throw that would be a, a big selling point for me that I, I wouldn't want this rifle because of this action. But some people probably train with this action and are used to that. So nothing knocking that as well. So that's my thoughts on it. Hopefully, Brooke, you uh, figure out whatever you want to figure out, which one you'll go with. But maybe this will help you and anybody else watching. So you guys take care. Like, share, and subscribe. See you on the next video. But uh, if you didn't get a chance, check out our videos where I review just this rifle. We take it out to 700 yards and have fun with it. So you guys see you on the next one. Take care. So at this position, it's two and three quarter inches to there to get the bolt to a rack back. On the MPA, we're looking at four and a quarter inches. So let me get on this side so you can see it. So that's four and a quarter. You can see I'm all the way up four and a quarter inches so that's quite a bit of difference i noticed when cycling the bolt it seemed like i was like man this thing has to go way up now i have a lot more room here from my reticle to my bolt where this side is a lot closer and once you get your hand in there so that's to me that's a plus on the tika for sure